Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here. Welcome back to The Art of Photography. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about storage and continue from where we left off in the last episode. And I want to talk about uh, two solutions that Amazon offers. And one I mentioned last time, which was Amazon Glacier, which looks amazing. And I want to clarify some things on that. Um, I dove into it a little more and I was ready to start using it and report back and ran into a little bit of a roadblock on it. Um, Amazon Glacier is a wonderful service. It's going to be for what they call cold storage or archiving. And I want to explain a little bit what that that means right now the problem is well the good side is it's very cheap and it is ready to use it's going to be basically one cent a gigabyte um, for storage uh, the not so good news and actually uh, one of the viewers uh, Enrico sent me an email and I had already been researching it and he clarified a few things too he's uh, he's an IT architect and there is no client right now um, for Glacier it's brand new uh, they have a developer release if you know how to code you could probably build something where you can actually start archiving files but right now there's no off-the-shelf solution that you know most photographers could go out and get just to make this happen um, and I, I suspect that probably you know because it's so new within the next six months to a year you'll at least start hearing of things and solutions that, that you might want to use for something like that um, Glacier 2 I want to talk about this is it's not it's it's a little bit different spin on storage um, you know, if you think of like an FTP server or even just a hard drive or even your computer, you know, you have a file system of folders and directories and then you have files that, you know, go within those. And it's really easy to find your stuff, especially if you're using something like Bridge or something. And there's a couple caveats here or a couple issues that we're going to have um, looking at Glacier. Glacier is designed, they, they're calling it cold storage. And the idea here is that you have, you know, a container that, that has, or they call it a vault which consists of archives. And basically when you upload an archive of stuff, it's gonna give you a key and a tag number and you're gonna to need to remember all that and know what it is and it's fairly long and you'll need that to retrieve data later. Um, they do charge for data transfer on that. And so the whole idea is that if you have files that you don't need to get to but you need to keep, uh, this is a good solution for that. So for instance, what you're gonna do is create archives of your files, uh, put them in Amazon Glacier and then the, the whole idea is that it's it's not time sensitive material. It's not stuff you need immediately. Um, if you need an archive of files that are in there, uh, you initiate that transfer, and basically it takes about four hours, and then the transfer begins. Now probably what they're doing and this is a really nerdy IT way of looking at it um, I don't I've, I've tried to research this I don't think they're using tape storage there's some argument there but whatever storage they're using it's retrievable so basically they're putting your stuff on some kind of media be it a tape a hard drive something um, probably even maybe of a blu-ray or something and then uh, you know a robot essentially takes that and it, and it archives it somewhere and it's ready to be retrieved later when you need it and so to initiate that transfer there's some mechanical stuff on the back end um, that would take place and so basically I, th I still think Glacier looks like a really good solution a very cheap solution um, and it's really don't think of it as a backup necessarily um, it's really just for cold storage archiving so it's stuff that you don't maybe older photos things like that that, that you might need to access particularly if you do your photography for a living um, and you have a business built around it. So, you know, for instance, I'll give you a use case scenario. Let's say you work for a client, whether this is, you know, a wedding you shot or maybe it's some work you did for a company where you shot some stuff for a catalog and the project's over. You may get a call one day in the future needing some reprints on something, who knows? Cold storage is a great place for that to go. That way, if somebody did need something, you can initiate a transfer and you could get to it and you're not paying a lot to store it. So that's really what that's good for. It backs itself up. Uh, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's just cold storage that's um, that's fairly secure and safe. Um, and so that's that's what's going to be Glacier. And it's interesting. I did all this research and I've, it's amazing the number of photography websites that came up and were really excited. This is going to be a great way to store your files cheap. Yes and no, um, it is, but it requires some stuff around it, and that's what it is. Um, as soon as there becomes available a client um, or an application that you can use for Glacier, I will be the first to report on it because I would love to use this service. Um, I could code something in PHP, and I'm not really interested because uploading large files and, and dealing with that, I'd rather wait for a client to come out for something like that. So anyway, having said that about Glacier, Let's talk about another one of Amazon's services that is available, it's ready to use. Uh, there's a lot of clients that support it. It's a service called S3, which is their simple storage service. And uh, Amazon S3 works a lot like just an FTP for a website. It's redundant storage, you don't have to back it up. Um, they're gonna handle all that. Uh, the data will be safe. <coughs> it is all online. 
Um, and it works a lot like an FTP site. One of my favorite clients that I like to use for it is an application um, on the Mac called Transmit, which is an, by nature an FTP application, but it handles S3 really well too. And what you do is you go into S3 into the back end and you create what they call buckets. And a bucket just simply is like, a, you can think of it like a folder and you're gonna put files in there, you're gonna put your stuff in there. Um, the cool thing about S3 is that, let's say you still sell stock photography on your website, something like that, you can make it so you can initiate file transfers so people could download things. You could host a podcast out of S3. It's a little more expensive than Glacier. Um, and it depends on how much data you're dealing with and how much you want to put into S3. Um, the, you know, just to compare and contrast, I've got the pricing for S3 and I use S3 for a few things right now. And uh, I don't have a lot on there. I have a get about a gigabyte of stuff in there right now. It's 12 cents a gigabyte. So my bill last month was exactly 12 cents. Um, depending on how much bandwidth you're using for people downloading a file um, you know that can that can start adding to the price too but it's still fairly cheap in the long run if you've got let's just say a couple gigabytes of, of material that you need to store s3 is awesome um, if you are have a terabyte of stuff okay at 12 cents a gigabyte 1024 gigabytes in a terabyte you're looking at hundred and twenty six dollars a month or something like that which may sound expensive if you're just an amateur shooter and you're looking for a solution to store photos. You got a terabyte of photos, which is a lot, and you're storing them in S3, you know, and your bill's $126 a month. That sounds high. If you're running a business, though, and you're uh, shooting weddings, you're shooting catalogs, you're shooting whatever, and you're making money off of it, you know, there is a cost of doing business, and that's not that high. $126 a month, it's still pretty cheap. Um, the biggest difference is S3 is not cold storage. This is why it's more expensive. You can download the files immediately if you need to get to them. Uh, you can upload them. Uh, the transfer's good. Uh, anyway, it's easily accessible. So, I mean, it's really comparable to something like an FTP site. Uh, you're going to have your speed and your bandwidth there. It's not putting them into cold storage where it's going to take four hours to initiate a transfer. Um, so, anyway, that's the biggest difference. And just think about what your needs are as far as what you want to do. I'm really excited about Amazon Web Services and a lot of the stuff they do just from a programmer geeky standpoint um, because it's the nature of a lot of the stuff I do for my day job it's, it's a wonderful thing um, however just note though that just depending on your needs your mileage may vary so Glacier isn't quite ready for for um, you know the average person to be using at this point particularly for photo storage um, however s3 is a good option I think when Glacier does become available I think using these two in combination can be really good um, so anyway that's all I'm gonna mention today is just a couple things about Amazon Web Services as people have pointed out in the comments there's a lot of other things you can go to there's Carbonite there's uh, I mean I'm not gonna remember all the names offhand but there's a lot of online backup solutions that you can do that you know it all comes down to a monthly cost and what's it worth to you is it easier to do a monthly cost where you have something you use online or is it easier to have a system of hard drives or disks or whatever it is you're doing we'll get more into this as we get into it but I wanted to talk about those two things today so and I have links for everything in the show notes so if you are interested in Amazon s3 and using it it's ready for prime time I'll put a link to transmit in there which is a wonderful application it's not very expensive um, I get a lot of use out of it so it's certainly worth the cost but anyway thanks guys for listening once again this has been the art of photography I'll see you next time